Since the 1990s, charities, politicians and ordinary members of the public have campaigned to stop live animal exports from the UK to mainland Europe. Now only one company still practices this trade, which actually costs the UK money. This is the story about the laws that protect this business, those who work tirelessly to change them, and how you can help put an end to this. Ian Driver has lived in Thanet for the last eight years. He's a family man and a community figure who used to work for Citizens Advice and now sits on the local council. One of the things he's been most outspoken about is animal rights, an issue close to his heart. So whenever a live animal export shipment leaves Britain for the continent, you can be sure you'll find Ian at Ramsgate Port. It started in May 2011 when Ramsgate became the core where the animals go uh, and I was involved in getting the demonstrations and the, uh, the, 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 the protest movement <laughs> off the ground. Uh, I, I'm just really sad that three years later we're still here uh, and that the lawmakers in Europe and in the British Parliament have, have not listened to what people say because you'll see for yourself when the lorries come just how disgusting this trade is and, and how appallingly badly the animals are treated. Uh, it's, it's, it's almost medieval in the way it operates and that's why people are so angry, why people are down here taking direct action week after week after week. And this is also as well the only port in the entire country where, where live exports are taking place now. It's the only place where it goes on. Uh, and in fact, it's the only trade going through Ramsgate now. Ramsgate Port hasn't had a ferry service now for nearly two years. There's the odd little ship coming now and again. But the only regular trade that goes through this port is the live animal exports. And it's costing them more than they make with the extra security. Uh, and of course, the public are footing the police bill. Uh, it, it really is a disgrace and, and I, I think people should wake up in this modern age. Uh, is this really how, how we, we should get our food? By making animals go travel for hours and hours in their own excrement and urine for days on end in cramped conditions. Is that really what food's all about? And, and, I, and I think people really need to, to think about that. Because we are in modern times and, 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 and people do recognize you know animals have got feelings too and, and there should be some respect you know the way I look at it if you're going to be cruel and barbaric to animals the likelihood is that you'll be cruel and barbaric to people as well so that's why I'm here it's all about humanity and decency uh, and treating fellow beings with whom we share this planet with a little bit more respect than, the, the, than they've had and, and, and I don't think there's anything stupid uh, or, or irresponsible about doing that we've got to take direct action we've got to be here uh, just to stand up and be counted uh, and, and I'll be coming as, as long as it keeps happening Ian is just one of many passionate people who come to protest the exports. We met Mary who told us about the culture amongst the campaigners. If you come down here and, you know, gel with the people here, you, re you realise that the people here, you, you have meat eaters here, you have people from all backgrounds, we work as a team. There is a huge, there is a huge community here with the people that protest. Everybody looks out for everybody else. You know, if you've got somebody who looks as though they might be in, in, in at risk from maybe one of the lorries or from anybody here that might want to, you know, do them harm, everybody comes together to protect each other. So here, you have a 
huge divergence of people who all have one aim and that is to stop animal cruelty. We look out for each other, we are like a big family. We're not racist, we don't have any other motive except that we want to stop animal cruelty. But where there is protest, there are police, the other group who have been here since exports began. Kent police previously served the protesters with a section 14 notice, which meant they could only stand in a small area and out of the way of the trucks. The Independent Police Complaints Commission later overruled the notice as they felt police lacked reasonable belief that the protesters would act unlawfully. Then the tension broke. The attitudes of both campaigners and police took a more serious turn as the trucks arrived. On the floor. Mary, there's one down here, crush. As the emotionally charged protesters watched these animals prepare to leave the country, I spoke to local businessman Reg, who has been prominent in the fight against the exporters. It's a legal type, the, the, the law allows it, but nevertheless doesn't make it right. And the people that are perpetrating this business, uh, are made with Johannes Underwater, he's a well-known uh, animal dealer, particularly on the continent as Dutch. He, uh, along with a man named Thomas Lomas, who runs a company called Channel Livestock, uh, and, and Lomas looks after the British side of things, that, you know, obtaining the sheep and, and, and arranging the transportation down to here. Uh, uh, Honda Water actually carries out the transportation with his own truck. He's got one or two trucks that he uses as well. And, uh, these people have all got criminal records. Um, uh, underwater was uh, fined in a British court in 2010 uh, for smuggling sheep across on piano ferries through Dover in completely enclosed trucks with no indication that there were live animals on board. Um, and he was fined, I think it was about 9,000 quid. Um, to give you an example, that's, that's how much he cares about the and he's still able effort. to keep practicing his business he's, after he's that. He's still the man that's doing this. And so is, and so is Lomas. Lomas and Channel Livestock were prosecuted in February of this year for what happened here on the 12th of September 2012 when uh, 42 sheep had to be shot on the dockside just over there uh, because the lorry that was carrying them was faulty and had been injuring the sheep as it, as it travelled down to, uh, to hear from Kettering. Kettering is where Lomas has got what's called a, a, a control post uh, and an assembly centre where he's allowed to gather animals before they're sort of bunched up and, and, uh, and exported. Um, so Lomas and Channel Livestock, this company, were prosecuted for that, for, for, for causing unnecessary suffering to the sheep. Yet he and his colleagues are still perpetrating this trade. Yet they're, they're the villains. We're the good guys, believe it or not. What actually is required eventually to stop this trade would be to, to uh, get within uh, the House of Commons a, 
uh, a consensus on changing the uh, law which allows at the moment this trade to continue through Ramsgate because the port owners, Ramsgate, the Fennec Council, <coughs> can't just refuse to accept the trade. They have to accept it. Within law they have to accept it and that's really is a big stumbling block. Yeah. What we need to see is for politicians to agree to bring forward uh, an amendment to what is actually called the 1847, 1840, 160 years ago, 1847 Piers and Harbour Clauses Act. Uh, uh, what we what we need is an amendment to that, which says that just says that ports can actually choose whether they want to accept trade or not from any particular uh, direction. Um, it's, it's a, I mean, it, it seems to me to be an obvious move. Uh, and, and it shouldn't be a contentious one. After all, you know, I'm a shopkeeper. I can choose whether I serve you or not if you come into my shop. I don't have to serve you. But it should be the case for any other business. And it is the case for most businesses that you can think of that they do have a choice of whether they accept your business or not. But not in the case of ports. Well, a law that's made in 1847 has got to be suspect in terms of its... Uh, in terms of its sustainability today. Uh, you know, things change, situations change. From what Reg told us about how the export industry works, we thought we should take a look at where the sheep come from before being put on the lorries. We couldn't get into Lomas's control centre, but we found out that a buyer for the exporters was procuring some sheep here at Ashford Livestock Market. Most of these creatures will never face the harsh journey to the continent but it's clear that the conditions they're kept in after leaving their farms to be sold here in the UK are not much better. to having export shipments in the day, generally in the morning, uh, and then really without warning it, it moved to the evening. Uh, and I mean of course that, that's had a, a, an impact on, on, on the protest, you know, it's a bit more difficult for people to get there, especially when it goes on one, two o'clock in the morning. So it's a deliberate ploy by the, uh, by, by the exporters to change the time. Uh, in order to, uh, to try to break the protest and, and stop people turning up. You know, there is a determined hardcore there who will turn up whatever the weather, whatever the time of, of, of day and night because they're so passionate about what's going on there that although it, it's really inconvenient at two o'clock in the morning, they, they'll make that sacrifice. No compassion! No compassion! The RSPCA have been heavily involved in the campaign against live exports, even attending a march that was organised by local groups to bring more attention to the cause. The live trade of farm animals has fallen unnecessary and the RSPCA police should be stopped immediately. Thousands of animals such as sheep and calves are exported to the continent and their journey can take hours on end, confined in these lorries and it must end ASAP. Thank you. Have you found anything so far that gives you legal backing to...? Um, unfortunately there have been a number of um, welfare concerns that have been highlighted and the operating company have already been convicted for animal cruelty. Once those animals leave their shores, we're unable to ensure that the regulations are kept. But unfortunately the law isn't strong enough to protect those animals in the lorry, so even when the law is adhered to, the animals are still suffering. The march through Ramsgate brought traffic to a halt. Compassion in World Farming, another charity who have campaigned tirelessly against the exporters, were also there to speak. Can 
Compassion in World Farming has been fighting this trade for over 40 years now. When we started off, you counted the trade in millions of animals. Then it was hundreds of thousands, now it's tens of thousands. We're down to one exporter. It, it's a battle that we're winning along with the local groups here, but it's a battle that we're winning too slowly. Today you'll get a sense of the public outrage about this trade. It, it's got no scientific basis, it's got no economic value to the UK, nobody in Britain wants this trade. We're calling on the politicians to step up and put an end to it once and for all. I'd say of all the issues that face our supporters, it's this issue of live animal transport that is closest to their heart. It's so visible. So many of the problems of factory farming are behind closed doors, but this is out in the open where people can see it. Kent Action Against Live Exports are a local group who have been fighting this trade since it began. They organised the march down to the harbour and arranged all the speakers. Over the years, it, it was mainly at Dover, and then suddenly it came to Ramsgate because they, they screwed up at Dover. And unfortunately, Thanet District Council were unable to say no because they know how to play the courts to these exporters. Every time you stand against them, they go to the court, and the courts back them because we have European legislation that says that although the animals are classed since 2009 as sentient beings, that was the Treaty of Lisbon. The Treaty of Rome over, overrides that when they go for export and they become goods. So in, they're just the same as a tin of beans, a cabbage, an apple. They've got no feelings, no fear. As well as the charities, all of the political parties were also invited to speak at the rally. Natalie Bennett came down to Ramsgate to join in with the march. The Green Party is utterly opposed to live exports of animals for slaughter. It's utterly inappropriate, it's forcing animals to suffer horribly for no reason. Uh, and it, we really have to stop this, and we say stop it now. If we were in power, we would immediately ban live exports for slaughter. Exports for slaughter. Um, one of the other things we've been doing is, of course, we have three MEPs in the European Parliament. One of the sort of tactics that we've been looking at is trying to say that we should have a European ban of that animals should be transmitted for more than eight hours, which would effectively stop this practice. The Greens were not the only political party in attendance. Both UKIP and Conservatives also came along. Okay, could you just give us the uh, Tory position on live exports, please? Well, I don't think there is a you know particularly a, a position, but as normal people of this country, you know, we're as concerned about live exports as anybody else. Uh, me personally, uh, because it particularly afflicts Ramsgate as one of those ports where it's still going on, it is something that does worry me. I mean, it's not something that keeps me up at night, but it's one of those things in life that is unnecessary. And for heaven's sake, let's stop it. Okay, and um, if you were to get in, what, what would you do about it? Well, there's a couple of things. I mean, I would be, you know, campaigning within the government to actually say, why are we doing this? Can't we have a, a UK-wide stop on live animal exports? Because I, mean, I always see the situation, New Zealand lamb comes from the other side of the world, killed and semi-frozen, why on earth are we transporting it even a short distance within, within Europe? It just seems a nonsense. Having heard from two of South Thanet's candidates in the upcoming election, we decided to find out what the other parties thought on the subject. Live animal exports, very controversial local issue. What is your position on that? Completely opposed. And actually, Thanet Council um, three years ago closed the port. Um, the problem we had was that the government didn't back us. Um, so some of the government agencies didn't support us in blocking this trade out of the port. So we ended up being taken to court by the live animal exporters. If I was elected as the MP, I would be lobbying the government agencies. I would be working with our local MEPs to make sure that this is banned across Europe because we actually need to work with our partners in the European Union and in government to make sure that this is stopped. As far as I'm concerned, on the hook, not on the hoof. I have to say, um, my problem with it is this. Under the rules as they are, if you export lambs to France, and they're in the field for 10 days in France, they can then be slaughtered and sold as French lamb, right? That's why the trade happens. And I think there are many of us that feel that the closure of a thousand slaughterhouses in Britain, because of EU regulations since 1990, has actually meant that animal husbandry and slaughter methods are far less humane now than they used to be. I want to see those rules reversed, I want to see small abattoirs and slaughterhouses setting up all over, all over the country, 
reducing the journey time yeah. of animals from the farm to where they're slaughtered. That, to me, is the right approach to this issue. But you can tell all the people screaming about the export of live animals, there is nothing we can do about it as a British government. Anyone guess why? Because of European rules which say we cannot ban the export <laughs> of live animals. So I would say this, when we're not part of the European Union, we will export animals from Ramsgate Harbour, but we'll do it when they're already on the hook and not on the hoof. My position on live animal exports is that the movement of animals for purely, I would regard as cosmetic reasons, i.e. moving British lamb to France for four weeks so that it can be called French lamb is totally ridiculous. And so I would be opposed to any kind of uh, animal exports that were for purely superficial reasons. There are some legitimate reasons for animal exports if we think about sport, horses for example, if you think about breeding and those kind of things. Um, they are legitimate reasons for moving animals. If, if animals have to be moved, then there are clear criteria of them being moved. And I think we should come down very hard on anybody, the eight hour rule, etc. Um, I don't think it's particularly um, enhances the reputation of the area that we're the only port that allows live animal exports. It doesn't do a lot for the brand or the image of the place. Um, so if you take out that large element of what I'm talking about, which is live animal exports for, for purely for making them more saleable, because they move over to France, they, they graze for two weeks, then they call it French lamb. I think that's crazy. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, the animals that, that, that are exported, they should be killed locally. Uh, we've seen a downturn in abattoirs in the country. Um, the animals should be killed locally, they should then be prepared and, and moved um, as, as a meat product rather than as a live export. I, I, I see very little reason for live animal exports. The Reality Party's position on live animal exports is it shouldn't happen. There is no point to it whatsoever. If animals, sh why should they suffer before they're killed? just for what what for financial reasons it's absolutely and is there a real financial reason it can't be that much cheaper to kill them over in wherever they go i guess poland maybe i, I don't know maybe they're not that third world europe so it can't be that much cheaper and it should be stopped immediately we've come a long way on it i mean the old days of the sharks following the boats out of new zealand and uh, you know, the throwing the dead sheep over have gone, and this is the last bit. So, why we can't stop it? I mean, you know, I don't know, but we're gonna try. With all parties seemingly against it, it seems odd that nobody has challenged this law in Westminster or Brussels. Ian gave a passionate speech at the march, and along with many others, vows to fight this trade until the end. Allows us to tolerate a barbaric, medieval form of getting our food. It's got to be banned, and it's got to be banned now. And I feel the powers that be in Westminster and the powers that be in the European Union are turning a blind eye to brutality and torture of animals. And one thing I've always believed is someone who believes in animal welfare is also a person who cares and has got humanity about their fellow human beings as well. It's all about respect for life. And I think that is a fundamental human trait. It's a good thing. We should be encouraging it. I believe that this movement in Ramsgate has been going on for four years. We're gathering more and more people. We are having an impact. And the people I've met over those four years who have, have, have been working to ban live exports, many of them have become my close personal friends. Some of the most humane and compassionate people I've ever met in my life. And with people like that, campaigning and spending their energies on banning live exports, I do not believe that we will not win. Ban live exports! Yeah!